All right, no matter both champions, you receive my instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times, men. Touch gloves now, you're boxing the bell. God bless you both. Michael Griffin with the final instructions as we take a look at the tail of the tape. A slight height and reach advantage for the southpaw, Marcus Brown. And indeed an experience advantage as well, but better be Ev. The lineal light heavyweight champion putting that title on the line here in our main event. Corey Erdman and Steve Molitor on the call for you here tonight. Arthur Beterbiev in the black trunks. Marcus Brown, the southpaw in the red, white, and blue. Marcus Brown popping that jab early from the south, southpaw stance. He's going to let her, he wants, he wants to let Beterbiev know that he's going to keep that jab on, try to keep him at bay, and not let Beterbiev have any sort of confidence to keep applying pressure to him. And I think that the conceit with Better Biev in the early rounds is that he might lose some of that, but that doesn't mean that he's losing control of the fight. Because we have seen Better Biev not give away rounds in the early going, but have a less than extraordinary punch output as he's just applying physical and mental pressure in the early going. Exactly, Corey. He may lose the round on the scorecard, but he's winning it in the fight. He's breaking him down, he's walking his opponents down, applying pressure, landing body shots, landing head shots, landing arm shots. He's slowly breaking his opponent punches, down what he likes punches. to do. I don't go. Listen to my break. Marcus Brown has said that Derek James hasn't changed a whole lot when it comes to his approach, but I feel like they have tidied some things up. There's a good body shot from Brown a moment ago. Well, going into the biggest fight of his life, I don't think he'd want to make too many changes, Corey. I think a few fun touches wouldn't help, wouldn't hurt, but I don't think he would make too many changes, so hopefully that's the case here tonight from Marcus Brown. Shot down the middle there from Marcus Brown. And one of the mistakes that Brown has made in the past, and you know, he would admit it, and I'm sure everyone can see it, is that he likes to throw to the body, but sometimes when he pulls out, he pulls straight back. And those are the three times that Jean Pascal caught him, and it's the same shot that he's been caught with in previous fights as well. He gets clubbed with some rough stuff along the ropes. And being um, a southpaw versus an orthodox, it's the last thing you want to do is pull out, pull back straight, and then line for the right hand. And that's what happened in his previous fights, and he does not want to do that against a big puncher like Better BF here tonight. But so far, he's slipped out of those hooks nicely, but not staying, staying straight in line in front of Better BF. Marcus Brown, or a supporter of Marcus Brown, this is how you would like this fight to look. Absolutely, Marcus Brown is boxing brutally from the outside, but it's still very, very early. We know better be able to get off to crazy fast starts and he slowly likes to just stalk his opponent, break him down, and he made nothing move for the first round for Harder Better Be Up. Mark Ramsey talking about what we were talking about earlier when he, Brown goes to the body, throw that left hook because he's usually right there for, for it. For the so they've clearly done their homework, as you would assume for a Unification world title fight. This round two begins of our main event here. Looking for another body shot, then rifling about nine of them in the clinch. Brown has always been a good body puncher, and you know, we often think of fighters who are described as capital B boxers, guys like Marcus Brown, that they must necessarily be counter punchers. And I've always felt that Brown isn't necessarily a counter puncher. I felt that when he's at his best, he's moving, but he's also dictating when the exchanges start. When Brown is at his best, I feel like he's getting off first. Absolutely. Just because a guy's walking you forward doesn't mean they're, you mean, they're being the more aggressive because when somebody throws and misses and you hit him with a three or four piece, that's still aggression. Nice 
nice jab from Marcus Brown. Not a lot of jabs from better BF so far. Perhaps just been nullified here, as is often the case with orthodox fighters against Southpaw. Of course, it's not impossible to outjab <laughs> a Southpaw, but Marcus Brown, pretty tricky guy to get your range on. Tricky guy, fast feet, fast hands. Beautiful drop by Marcus Brown at the end of that corner. Ducks under a right hand of better BF, comes back with a left hand of his own. The quieter this fight is, the better it is for Marcus Brown. Absolutely, especially with the crowd that's going to be behind better BF in his first uh, defense in front of his hometown crowd. You know they're going to go wild when he starts landing some good clean shots. Don't push, don't push up. Trying to get his respect there on the inside. Shoe shine body work. That's now it. back to his jab. Final 10 seconds of round two. Not a lot happening. But Marcus Brown, the busier fighter. Certainly landed more shots here in the second round, and you'd have to think that's two rounds in the bank for the challenge. Wait for the bell, man. Wait for the bell. Fox. Round three underway, and this isn't unusual territory for Archer Better Biev, as we've referenced. And although he dropped Adam Dynas in the opening round, he didn't look great in the early going against Dynas. He looked a little sluggish. He didn't look great in the early going against Enrico Colding either. But Better Biev typically, not typically, has always <laughs> found his opening 100% of the time, as is evidenced by his record. You can't do that every time. But there are some who feel like Better Biev has started to slip a little bit, like he might be on the back nine of his career. And it's those people who think that Marcus Brown has a very real shot in this fight, and Brown is proving those people right in the early going. Spence Jr., his stablemate, Floresa Shields, and his other stablemate, Jamel Herring. Ramirez, Spence, and Shields have won unified titles. Every single fighter from that team, except for Queen Underwood, has at least fought for a world title as a professional now that Marcus Brown has stepped in the ring here tonight. Just a terrific team was that 2012 squad. That's a stacked Olympic boxing team. Good shot there from Better Biev. That's where ben Brown has to be careful. There was a good right hand and then followed up by another good left hook by Better Biev. Back up, back up, back up. Box. In terms of numbers, Brown did the better work there. He had a good combination to the body, but it's exactly those sequences where he's found himself in trouble in the past. He doesn't want to be leaning against some ropes against a guy like Better Biev. BF now starting to open up. Beautiful right hand down there. But Brown throwing some heavy shots too and crying in the back fire there. Frank, stop. Come back, come back. Brown earning. 
earning his respect. Former fighter advising their man, better be av, to forget the head and go to the body this round. Um, we'll see if better be av listens to his corner man. Uh, and more specifically, Scully just said, hey, remember how you didn't want to hit guys to the body, your sparring partners? Because they're going home. They're going home? Send this guy home. <laughs> Sneaks through there from Better BF. Get off his foot, man. Couple quick punches by Marcus Brown up the middle there. But to your point, Steve. No punches, no punches, no Brown punches. finding himself. Oh, that is a nasty gash oh, oh. right in the middle of the forehead of Better BF, and he is leaking all over Move the place. The over we got unintentional clash of heads. Yeah, me. It doesn't matter, it's an unintentional. Both cut, both cut. And Brown, both men are cut. sporting a it's cut. Unintentional clash of heads. Over his right eye as well. But let me tell you something, you get a head cut there, Corey. The head bleeds so yeah, much you, you more. It's just, look at it just squirt out of better be of his head. Um, but Brown, with a cut over his eye, is not gonna have an easier night. That cut is pouring blood from the forehead of Better Bev. Let's see if we can catch this clash of heads. Right, no punches. Yeah, well, he's he's slipping over the left. Don't punch. Let him go. Let him go. Well, well, we are back to action. To both corners gonna have their work cut out from him in between rounds, Corey. Russ Amber not in the corner of Archer Better Bev here tonight. Unfortunately, tested positive for COVID. We send our best wishes. To Russ. To Russ. As right, things getting a little messy here on the inside. Both men may be sensing a little desperation with those cuts. Break, no punches, no punches, no punches. And to I'm Marcus right, Brown's right, credit, he's not letting Better no Bev bully punch. him. He's definitely firing back when things are getting messy on the inside. If he has any any dream to win in this fight, he cannot let Arthur Better be a bully him around and box banging him around. Brown looked like he might have been stuck on the ropes trying to spin out. Better be his corner telling him when Brown goes to the ropes, just bang him to the body. Crimson mask right now in the final minute of round four. And Marcus Brown doesn't look all that much better. Hard body shot from Better BM as he goes back downstairs with the left hand. You can just hear the power of Better BM when he throws those shots when they land on the arms or body. You can just hear the noise they make and how strong he is. Marcus Brown throwing hard shots to the body in response as well. You have to hand it to him. He is trying to stand up to better BM in his kind of fight. Right, stop, we mentioned stop, that the first two stop, rounds stop, 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 stop. look the way that you want them to. If you're supporting Marcus Brown, well, these are the rounds that Not look like the kind of fight that Arthur Sit better BM wants. You first. I'd like to see the doctor. The doctor's going to take there. a look at both fighters here. Both guys, he's cut. I want you to just look at the cut and tell me he's okay to continue. Okay, that's good. Thanks very much, Mark. Go right there. Over in the other corner. Heads. 
that's not a headbutt, so Corey, I'm not sure the exact rules. Do they go to the scorecards? Go to the that? scorecards, yeah. But well, Brown had a couple good early rounds, but. if there's any desperation from either man. Well, and we've also heard that from ringside physicians many times, too. One yes. more round turns one into more one round. more round Get each and every stop. round. No punches. Don't push his head down. And he's losing a lot of blood in there, Corey. Left hand down the middle from Marcus Brown. Better be of his pouring blood. <laughs> Shook with those overhand rights. No punches, no punches. Let's go, let's come back. Watch your heads, guys. Good left hook from Better BF. Freezes Brown along the ropes, who again is in Stuck exactly in the corner. territory that Better BF no wants. Punches. That's where Better Come BF back, wants his fight Come to back, be. Man. He'll be most effective in there when uh, Marcus Brown's trapped in the corner. Marcus Brown was successful earlier. He was getting all the way around that ring. I feel when he's backing himself in that corner, he can't go anywhere. And that is uh, an easy night for Better BF when he's right. in the corner. Go push him, go push him. That right hand for Better BF just missed. Might have grazed the top of the head of Marcus Brown. But to your point, Steve, where Brown was a second ago in the center of the ring. That's when he was having his best moments. But when he's trying to counter off the ropes, he's almost banking on the ability to make better BF miss 70% of the time and hurt him with, counter with his counters, which is, is a difficult game plan to enact. The blood just flowing from better BF's forehead though. Six. Oh, 
beautiful one, too, by Better Diaz. He's behind it with a good left hook, and there's that right hand that he just wraps around the guard of Marcus Brown. You saw that shot a moment ago, that kind of hybrid scoop uppercut. That's the shot that Better Diaz camp calls the Campillo. It's the <laughs> shot that he knocked Gabriel Campillo out with, and when you hear them call that out, that is what they're asking Better BF to throw. Fighting a game challenger in Marcus Brown, who has a cut of his own, but not nearly as grotesque as Archer Better Biev, who well, at times he's looking like Stone Cold Steve Austin at <laughs> WrestleMania 13. He is leading quite a bit in there. We've seen that power jab from Better Biev a couple times over the last two rounds as well. Better be, I was very hesitant to let that jab go in the opening two rounds, but he has found it over the last six minutes. I feel that now that uh, Marcus Brown has slowed down a little bit, I feel that he has a little more confidence to throw that power jab and really push Marcus Brown in the corner. So he can unload like he's doing here. Better be, I is a tough man to contend with. He feels that he has you hurt. Good oh, shot to the body. beautiful left hook to the body. And a right hand right behind it, and Marcus Brown will take a knee. Six. Still lots Seven. of time left in this round, Eight. Corey. You all right? Lift up your hands, Joey, you're all right. Box. minute and change is an eternity for the only world champion in boxing with a 100% knockout ratio. Let's see if Marcus Brown can hang on. And Corey, to point some note, as I talked, as we mentioned earlier, um, better be a, isn't just an aggressive, tough fighter. He's skilled and smart. You see him make those small side steps to the right of uh, Marcus Brown. Take away the left hand and has Marcus Brown the ropes and dig those shots to the body. He's a very, very smart fighter, just like he did right there and scoops that right hook. Right. Or that specialty no shot. Let him go, Marcus. Brown. Let him go. Step back, Marcus. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Brown still trying to recover. Better be him. You see, Brown just stationary. Better be him. He's able to turn him. He's able to get different angles. Ten seconds remaining here in round seven. Even with the blood flow, you gotta give so much credit to the champion out of better be up. He's creating these angles. He's using Marcus Brown's body to push him and sidestep him. Very entertaining round. The blood is flowing. Even more so for the champion. Because you mix again, well, and I've done you hurt them, you stop doing this. Here, Steve. You need to continue like that, okay? You see how um, I said it mentioned okay. earlier, how he takes him with that left the hook, body, you know. followed by the straight okay. right hand down the we middle. Surprise. That's surprise what he did to Look at the angle of this game. Come on, Tom. You can open up the crowd upstairs, and that's exactly what we saw that night. Absolutely, and he's been doing it for a couple rounds, mixing up body and head. That was a beautiful left hook to the body, which brought the hand down. 
Mark, no punches. No punches. Watch your head, Marcus. Get your head out of there. Better hands that straight right hand that put him to the canvas. Alexander Usyk Absolutely. in the Olympics. This is a guy who, yeah, he makes 175, and he's not tall, so we don't think of him as a big, light heavyweight, but he is a lot to deal with physically. Absolutely. I mean, again, 16, 16 0 with 16 knockouts, you know he's got some strength and some power. From the challenge. Another good right hand from Better BF. Troy, with, with both middle end shots, you gotta you gotta see it yourself. This seems like Better BF just has so much more power and so much more strength behind his punches than Marcus Brown does. That said, you do have to hand it to Marcus Brown, who spent a lot more time in the center of the ring and trying to move here this round. in round eight. Box. The apron's red, personally. You know that, that yeah. photo that goes viral every once in a while of that fight from the... Tony the, Weeks? Well, the, that yeah. one, but the one from Vancouver from the early 1900s of the, the boxer was covered in blood. And yeah, the oh yeah, hold it's on. It's starting to look like that one. No, 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 Round nine begins. And again, to Marcus Brown's credit, oh. he's hurt, but he's trying to make adjustments. But now he might really be hurt with better BM all over him. Oh, and yeah. down he goes after a hard left uppercut. Four, five, six. How much more can seven, Marcus Brown take? Eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'd, love to see that. I'd love to see the replay. I don't know if it was a ball. The left hook uppercut to the body. 17 and 0, 17 knockouts. Two fours of the light heavyweight division held by that man, Arthur. Better be out. Hack the promoter, Yvonne Michelle. A valiant effort from Sir Marcus Brown. That was his last round. But Arthur better be out. That was the last round. He's not the legitimate light heavyweight champion for a reason. If you would have stopped it after five. Overhearing some audio between Michael Griffin and Michelle, Michel. and someone said that was his last round. Like this might have been waved off. In all likelihood, it goes to the scorecards. Better be at wins anyway. Yeah. But in terms of the highlight reel finish and keeping that perfect percentage to the extent that he needed it, he got it. Let's see if we can see it here. Was it a body shot? Headshot that got him. Is the 
Perfect. Left hook to the body. That was a Left body shot. Right Delayed right reaction. Okay. Okay. Right. Liver shot for, did it. Not an easy one to referee, goddammit. There's a happy man with the world of options ahead of him as he moves forward to 2022. Brody. Obviously, the Canelo fight is something that him and his team would want. Possibilities for better BM are certainly out there. And his has been a career, as we've talked about, that's been hard with injuries, the starts and stops, injuries, illnesses, cancellations. We would have liked to have seen more of better BF to this point in his career than we have. But we hope that at 36 years of age, there are still more defining fights for him yet to come. For Marcus Brown, disappointment, albeit against the best light heavyweight in the world. Still, I, I think you would have to say, that the drastic flaws that we saw in Marcus Brown, they were improved upon in this fight. That said, let's make this one official and send it down here and bring it out to Christian Gauthier. 17-17, and always champion of the WBC and IBF des Milours. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest by knockout at 46 seconds of round number nine, 17 for 17, and still WBC and IBF, light heavyweight champion of the world, Arthur.